So this is my little RG23 when I um, when I bought this I didn't pay a lot for it I picked it up and uh, uh, obviously used I didn't know who RG was but since found out RG stands for ROM Gieselshaft it's uh, I'm probably pronouncing that totally wrong but um, I'll put the name down below and you can translate it however you wish but they're a German company and they're an engineering company that um, they made chuck chucking tools that kind of thing and back in the early 50s they went into the production of inexpensive firearms and somewhat like this there's a whole list of them they're made from I think they even made some gas guns and certainly calibers from 22 or 22 long rifle up to 44 magnum I believe and they're the original Saturday night specials they were very inexpensive at the time I think this one back in the 80s when mine was made was about 25 bucks new so that gives you an idea of how how cheap they were they are the original Saturday night special sort of cheap disposable gun for criminals or not just criminals but but also made them a firearm affordable to a lot of people at the time who just wanted a firearm for plinking or self-defense or whatever but um, yep they started import importing from Germany in the early 50s but um, that all changed after the attempted assassination of President Ronald Reagan <coughs> by a guy called John Hinckley John Hinckley Jr he tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan um, in his early days of pres being the president of the United States and that somewhat led to the Gun Control Act of 1968 uh, the, that, once that came about ROM could no longer import um, firearms into into the USA so RG opened up a, a plant in Miami Florida and they started using they imported the parts as we can see here German parts and they built these in Florida Miami Florida so that's how they got around the Gun Control Act Okay, so the average is four pounds seven and a half ounces on single action, and double action. That's a stiff double action. It doesn't feel all that stiff when you when you're using it, but. Yeah, that's about nine and nine pounds five. That's weighing in it slightly over a pound, one pound one ounce, and that's loaded. I like this little pistol, a uh, little revolver, and I would recommend picking up an RG revolver. Or they also did semi-autos. They're a piece of American firearm history and German firearm history so they they are interesting and 
be somewhat became infamous because of John Hinckley Jr. attempting to assassinate President Ronald Reagan and the, I've done a shortened version I've took the documentary and shortened it down and stuck it on the end of this video just because I thought it may be of interest to some of you and so watch it or don't watch it whatever it's up to you but anyway thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later Ronald Reagan had only been in office for 70 days no one yet knew what kind of president the former Hollywood actor and California governor would be. Certainly, no one imagined that his presidency almost would not make it to day 71. Decades later, the video evidence from that dreary spring afternoon still carries the power to shock. Two seconds, six shots, three men down. The president is pushed into his limousine by his Secret Service detail. The driver speeds off towards the White House, then diverts to George Washington University Hospital when it's discovered Reagan has been shot. This is the story of an event that shocked the country. The exact sequence of shots is difficult to determine, but according to a government report, the first shot hits James Brady in the forehead. The second takes down Washington, D.C. police officer Thomas Delahanty as he turns to locate the president. Delahanty is hit in the back of the neck. The third shot strikes agent Tim McCarthy in the chest. Three bullets, three wounded. Now, the people who are standing between the shooter and his target have cleared away or ducked for cover. The assassin has a clean shot at Reagan. This is when Jerry Parr saved the president's life. By quickly shoving Reagan into the limousine, Parr moved the president behind the door's bulletproof glass. The timing could not have been luckier. The assassin's fourth shot hit the window. The glass cracked, but stopped the bullet in its tracks. The fifth bullet is the one that hit Reagan. According to the Secret Service, the Reagan bullet ricocheted off the side panel of the car and passed through this opening between the door and the body of the car. Ironically, this was at the exact moment Jerry Parr was pushing the president into the car. The bullet entered under Reagan's left arm and lodged in his lung. The sixth and final shot carried over the road, hitting the building across the street. These are the only images of the gun in the shooter's hands. It's a 22 caliber Saturday night special. He's still pulling the trigger, but by now the gun is empty. This is the portrait of the would-be assassin, John W. Hinckley Jr. It's now 2.29 p.m. Authorities would soon learn that John W. Hinckley was a troubled 25-year-old with an overwhelming, almost pathological need to become famous. Hinckley was notoriously consumed with the film Taxi Driver. Abby, just forget about this. It's nothing. And its protagonist, Travis Bickle. He's got to be a Secret Service man. A fictional character, at least partially inspired by the diaries of Arthur Bremer, the man who shot Governor George Wallace in 1972. Prior to Hinckley's trial, his defense team engaged psychiatrist William Carpenter to assess Hinckley's mental state. He was, of course, very taken with the taxi driver and the taxi driver's effort to save uh, uh, the, the young prostitute that was played by Jodie Foster. And he fancied himself very much in that role and uh, came to believe that he had this unique and very special relationship with Jodie Foster. Hinckley fixated on Foster. He called her on the phone, left notes in her dormitory mailbox at Yale, including poems professing his love. By the time Hinckley arrived in Washington on March 29th, he had reached the breaking point. It was time to fulfill his destiny. 
he had to kill the president. Hinckley wrote a last letter to Jodie Foster. I'm doing all of this for your sake, it said. I'm asking you to please look into your heart and at least give me the chance with this historical deed to gain your respect and love. He felt that it was important that everyone recognize the unique place in history that he and Jody Foster and their relationship had. And killing a president uh, would bring that attention. Uh, he felt that he and Jody Foster would end up living in the White House and be properly recognized. Um, Rome has many new and innovative products on display out of our 10 product lines. Uh, one of our first uh, new innovative products is our RKE uh, vise, which is a CNC machine center vise. So this is our new LVE uh, pneumatically actuated chucking package, uh, primarily used in the oil and gas industry. And uh, the, the benefit of this is it, it, it uh, centers the, the pipe uh, out front in, in the machining area. So there's three arms come out and uh, grab the pipe and bring it on center. And then the three jaws come in and compensate. It's a compensating chuck to compensate for any outer roundness. It's very important in the threading operation for oil pipe to lay down a clean set of threads. So is this one of your larger chucks? No, actually we make chucks all the way to 5.5 .5 meters in diameter or nearly 18 feet in diameter. Wow. Yeah.